Uh, ladies and gentlemen, her Panwo show listeners, I have Tony Topping back on again for a second visit to the Hapanwo show. Hello, Tony, how are you? Hello, good evening, Ben. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm working hard, and I'm, my head is frazzled, and I'm pedalling along like hell. I'm like a beautiful swan that's uh, swimming like hell underneath. So that's me. Uh, that sums me up in a nutshell at the moment. There's some extraordinary goings on to talk about, I'm sure. Right, well, I'm sure J- Jason Bourne would be very, very proud of you, I'm sure. Jason Bourne would uh, would certainly be proud of me, uh, my uh, my hero, and perhaps we can chat to the listeners about uh, about that. Uh, no doubt we'll get the... Uh, I'm nothing like Jason Bourne, but his so- story, his metaphor of his story is yeah. so similar to mine, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, it's not... Anyway, nice to be back on a pan world, Ben, and uh, I haven't got anything planned. I normally, I normally plan what I'm going to talk about. I just haven't had time, uh, you know, and I always find that if I think if you go in live like this, uh, without any reason real or preconceived ideas of where things are going to go, I think it sounds a, a whole lot better. It, I tell you what, we've made some very, very good shows, which we just put out, we just winged it out, and it's you just worked right, out man. well, you know. And it's, yeah. It was really great to meet up with you um, last weekend, because yes. it was last weekend, we were both at the um, Exopolitics Great Britain ET yes. Communications Conference, the second one, yes, in we, Leeds, we and... Um, you did a you did a speech there. I was the host and yes. the MC, and um, it's good I've been getting lots of uh, I got lots of feedback from people in certain quarters in high places in the UFO research community who said that the feedback was it was absolutely superb. Mm. Um, so, uh, which is good to hear. But they said it was very impressive to talk again. That was the feedback that I was uh, I was getting. There's never enough information. I wanted to go deeper with it, uh, but there was enough information there. Uh, there was a lot of material that I'd not covered before uh, in the talk to do with my contact experiences, my cover harassment uh, and the extraordinary uh, goings on that happened on the morning before I went to film with Channel 4 in London for this new Channel 4 thing that's coming out, uh, which is extraordinary. I, I think it's pr- important to observe, Ben, that we better not go down the look at me, I'm in the media, I'm doing something for Channel 4 routine because uh, you have to have your guard up and you won't be disappointed. Do you get me? I know. Now? Well, I, I get what you're saying, Tony. I mean, as you, as you know, I'm Maybe I'm, I'm maybe slightly more hesitant than you are about getting involved with these people. Maybe because you can handle them, you mm. you say you can handle them. Maybe you can. Maybe you can. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I, I, I said the same to Miles because I had Miles on a couple of weeks ago, and um, and I did ask him. I said, well, you know, after what happened, mm-hmm. after the track record that the mainstream media has mm-hmm. for their coverage of the subject, especially in the last few mm-hmm. years, which has got you know. Um, with all due respect, you know why? Why get involved with them? Why do you trust them? What? Mm. Do, why? Why is this new project going to be any better mm-hmm. than the last? Because Plum Pictures, I mean, I, as mm-hmm. as you know, I mean, Plum Pictures mm-hmm. sounds to me just like another these people, and I have, and so. So, Tony, I mean, do you, do you really think this is going to be... Do you really think there's well, any with, uh, with, productivity with, ben, with this? Yeah, well, well, with me, Ben, the, the thing with this is controversial as it may seem, that, that this is going to be... Television is going to be where I want to work. I went to drama school. Television is going to be where I want to work. So this is going to be my working environment. So I have to know it. I have to have eyes in my ass with it and know it like the back of my hand. There was a couple of things that occurred that um, editorially... Um, I said that I uh, I didn't want to permit happening, uh, and they were and they were fine with that. And yeah. also, as well as UFO researchers speaking to the media, you have to absolutely be slick. Uh, you have to make sure that what you say is what you say uh, without any lampoonery. If they start lampooning it slightly, you know, bring them back to focus. You're leading the way. That's where we've made the mistake. I think UFO researchers appearing in the media have made the mistake of thinking that they're leading the way. The production company are leading the way. The director's leading the way, and that's not correct. There was a was something that happened with the director and his production assistant where it was going down a bit of a, a lampoon type avenue and he didn't want that to happen he he, he wanted um he just wanted something a bit a bit different but you see it's it's channel 4 and, and my opinion of it is that, that you know I, I want to work in the tv industry as a television presenter Ben. i want to do some extraordinary documentary work you see not just as a ufo researcher there are a particular particular certain documentaries that i want to do which could prove to be um, controversial, but the the thing is, is that Channel Four as a broadcaster doesn't appear to have evolved. If we're speaking in the world of TV, compared to the Discovery Channel or even Channel Five, who did David Ike was David Ike correct? Yeah. Channel Five was quite focused on on what they were doing. Channel Four have got this habit of doing this. They did something on a police commissioner in Kent actually, um, and there's this slight lampoon element to it. This 
slight laughing element to it that they that mm. they put in, and it seems to be standard format in all their documentaries of the of the kind of like the uh, the Chinese takeaway Indian restaurant music playing in the background uh, and very subtle lampoonery of the people that they're documenting. The thing with the UFO mm. documentary, good at that. Yeah, they are, and the thing with I think the thing with commercial documentaries, uh, as in Channel Four, ITV, the broadcaster Channel Four will need to mm. evolve. It'll come a phase well the, the, way, the, the way they will... Re- so, Tony, I'm really pleased that you have, have have some kind of editorial control over what is being... Um, is you've got to know you've got to know what you're doing, and you've got to make way for the fact that you will be lampooned by them and you won't be disappointed. You've got to just take the heat slightly. You've got to have the laugh of the label attached mm. to you. You can't take yourself seriously, but you've got to be... Ca- all UFO researchers who are appearing in the media have got to be careful editorially of what direction... It, it is no good being filmed by a company called Off the Fence Productions who did something about aliens... Co- co- um, uh, confession of an alien abductee. Yeah. The Fence are a comedy. Off the fence of comedy. These guys are like entertainment factual. There's a very big difference between the two. Bring it, uh, you're asking for trouble if it's a comedy production company with a comedy director. Uh, that's exactly what's going to happen, and you won't be disappointed with the results. So you, that, that's, these are the things that you... But we lead the way. They don't. There's a demand now from broadcasters for our information. It's from yours, then, for that matter. Yeah. There's a demand for it. They're getting hungry for it. They're getting bored with the same old format. So I think we're on a path to success with it. The only people... <clears throat> I would be very wary of is the BBC, the damage is done, and we won't go into that. Because I don't well, want yes. to sound like I'm some sort of media whore, and it's me, me, me. <laughs> so we covered that on a pre- we covered that yeah. on our last program, actually. No, I think we yattered on. Uh, but but yeah, it's it's um you know it, that that's the thing. What's happening? I'm very pleased with it. What I'm gearing up to do is um is hopefully with with Channel Four with another broadcaster is do a major documentary about myself that will be uh, carefully balanced with with experts and. Also, debunkers alike will give it all a fair in and, and, and see what the public think of it. Um, well, and that, that's going to be the next plan for me with, with the world of broadcasting. Well, I think that's fair enough. If it's somebody decent like Professor Chris French, who, is, who disagrees with us, but at least is civil and polite, right. that's cool. But if it's, if it's Uncle Andy and Auntie Dave, I'd uh, sort of like hesitate to get in. Yeah, what I mean, Uncle Andy and Auntie Dave, I mean, you know, why would we be bothered about their opinion if, if our experiences are true? If our yeah. experiences are true, uh, which mine are, why would we uh, be remotely interested in their opinion? Uh, yeah. I'd only be interested in their opinion if we were to form a TV project where we meet in the middle and try and form an understanding of what's actually going on, which yeah. would be fascinating. But as you say, Ben, can't be trusted. But you, your, so your aim is, I mean, I think you, you seem to be going into this with a lot more, um, sort of like, you seem to be a lot more aware than the maybe other people who got involved in these projects might have been. Because as we, yeah. we said on another, on another radio show, we were both guests, yeah. Um, you, if you go in there just saying, okay, film me, I'll say what you want, do what you want, you've got to realise you're just the ingredients in the broth, and yeah. the, uh, they're the chefs, they have the recipe, they have the kitchen, they control the kitchen. Um, yeah, but I mean, in this case, it sounds like you, you're aiming to become kind of like a producer, as well as contributor. Yeah. Contribute, a major present, a TV presenter. Television will be the line of work that I'm going to go down, uh, yeah. Ben, involving my experience and involving that of other experiences. There's some, there is a, uh, there is a, a project that I'd like to do uh, that that, it w- that would involve the thing to do with terrorism and stuff like that that's going on. I'd like to do a documentary on that, bizarrely enough. But that's me as a television presenter, not as a UFO researcher. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, the thing is, is that the BBC just cannot be trusted with anything they say or do. They just cannot be trusted at all. So the damage is done. Uh, with them, but these people from Channel Four, they were nice people. I'm sure they'll lampoon me. I'm sure they'll send me up. I won't be disappointed with that. But I'm also sure that it will develop into uh, an, ev- an evolution where we're going to do something really good without the lampoonery. Is what I want from a UK broadcaster. You know. Well, I mean, I've, I've written about this before. I mean, I don't believe that the media is completely controlled. I mean, it can't be completely controlled because no. if it was, we wouldn't get the media. We wouldn't get. Cert- there's certain productions that come out today mm. which are enormously progressive. I mean, they are. Uh, you're right. You know, things like, I mean, like Avatar or Cloud Atlas or, you're going back a few years now, but things like mm. Blake 7. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, you wouldn't get, mm. what, what we have is we have um, the media that is influenced. They don't mm. completely control everything. If they completely controlled everything, mm. we'd have a very different, we'd have a very, very sort of like monolithic terms, uh, monolithic propaganda mm. with a, we would have a counter prop. It would have a uh, counter propositional element, mm. but that element would be very, very sort of attenuated and very um, yeah. weak. And, you know, we'd yeah. be able to spot it a mile off. But you don't get that. You actually have genuinely yes. progressive programs coming you, out. You, you do, Matthew. And the thing is, is what they were exploring. This guy from uh, Dan Schreiber. It was what 
it took an interesting turn of events outside uh, where we were filming outside Chatham House. The Royal Institute of International Affairs. I've no idea whether they're involved. I was just following up a lead from another author called Alec Newell, and we thought we'd go there. It would make yeah. good telling. We thought a New Zealand guy, yeah, he's very interesting. New Zealand chap. guy, but it's what it's what happened. The extraordinary events of the morning before going to film there, Ben, uh, because as you know, I'm a I'm a contact experiencer. Uh, they've escalated. I say they only last night we had three three of these UFO things come over uh, on the way back home last night. Uh, and their manoeuvrability, and their obviously they're, they're there, they're present, uh, and it's what is. As I say, I was speaking to this guy at the conference that I went to, and um, what was freaking him out was the fact that uh, I found this all particularly normal. He said, "I don't know who it was I was speaking to." It was one guy, and I found all this acclimatization and the dealing with it and understanding it all completely normal. Whereas other elements of my life are askew slightly. Uh, I'm I'm arse over to, I'm the wrong way around with things. So uh, on that morning when we when we were going to go and film, uh, I went up to London to film with them, and uh, that was interesting actually because they they wanted to talk. The director wanted to talk about um, agents of influence in the media, especially in the area of UFOs. Uh, so agents of influence are out there, um, definitely. So we, we, you know, but really, you know, the subject matter we were covering was very light. Really, there's nothing much of, of any real classified kind of uh, interest going on there on a, on the TV program that we did to alarm them, and that's what they were interested in. They were thinking, well, will you be followed? Will you be this? Will you be that? And, and the answer is no. It's quite light, really. But you know, when, when I got to my level, I've been tortured since t- from 2000 to 2005 by a gang of individuals who are acting. Uh, uh, without legality, uh, uh, using mind-invasive technology. Now, on that morning, Ben, uh, when I went to uh, up there to film them, I had some extraordinary visions, and they were, they were quite simply, they weren't dreams, they were too vivid. It was them. It was the things that were coming over my house, and they were interacting with me in sleep. Uh, and even now, I know when the, I've got to the stage, Ben, between me and you, because mm. just between me and you, mate, I've got, well, I've so got this, to, is, this is being recorded. So. Oh, is it? All right. I've got <laughs> to the stage. You. <laughs> oh no, you haven't, mate. Well, I've got to the stage now where they're. Uh, what they're doing now is they're they're acclimatising me so that the, what's doing it's progressing in stages. So they're coming over the house. It's taken them sodding years. I don't know what the I don't know why they've been so slow, but maybe what's happening is they're coming over the house and I'm interacting in synchronisation with them now in sleep. That will probably escalate into an acclimatisation with them, so that we have a full glo- blown kind of contact thing going on. And as I said in my lecture, I, I won't be able to understand the science, but I will be able to understand the spirituality of them and their religious faiths. The science might be beyond me. Um, so, And what they're doing is they're, they're escalating this quite dramatically. Their presence is now quite dramatic being there. Uh, only this morning things were going on, which is deeply personal. Uh, you see, the reason why I say it's deeply personal, Ben, is because we're faced with a world who just cannot seem to accept this. Yeah, um, yeah. And also, as I said in my lecture, both the United Kingdom government and the US government are being warned. It seems the UK is. It seems I thought the US run the show with all this, uh, but it seems mm. the UK are, uh, are certainly being singled out for uh, for particular attention by them. And there's a possibility that other members of the population are, uh, are maybe interacting with them as well, but are keeping quiet about it. So um, interacting in what way, Tony? What they plan well, to do? What, 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 the, what, what it is is they're, they're interacting full on, Ben, as if I was uh, speaking to you in a pub, mm. so, and they're escalating that very subtly. So on that morning, in particular, on that morning when it was all kicking off in the Ukraine, which I found fascinating, and this was this was um, this was of great concern to me. What was happening? Because it's the it's the um, it's the what's the word I'm looking for? It's the precursor to the chaos theory of a little thing flapping its wings, causing a tornado. Oh, the butterfly, uh, yeah. yeah, the butterfly effect. And and this is what appears to be. Uh, you see, what we're doing is we've got neocons, we've got absolute bloody lunatics running around saying war this, war that, war the other. These guys who are flying in over my house know the consequences of all that. They're probably they're probably three centuries ahead of us with technology. They've probably had their own shares of disaster. They share what is fascinating, Ben, is they have this uh, one. One group in particular, what I said at my conference, has this high-tech uh, artificial intelligence uh, integrated technology systems with their aircraft and, and all this kind of thing, but they still have a spiritual faith. Mm. They still have a spiritual faith, which I find fascinating because you would have thought that with all this high-tech technology, they would have understood the afterlife, they would have understood spirituality and gone beyond it, but no. It appears they have a guiding faith to um, to what they do. That's and interesting, because so, I mean, we, yeah. in terms of philosophy, it's always been thought, well... Presumably, at some point, we'd understand everything, and then we wouldn't yeah. need 
any kind of mysticism in their life at all. But I yeah. mean, is this to do with again with chaos theory and yeah, the uh, fractals there, and yeah. It, it, it is in a way. There are, uh, as I said, there, there are, there are. What, what's happened as I summed up at the conference for those who uh, for those who worked there is I summed up from an analysis of my own situation that I was being targeted by a covert interest in the UK that has links to other alphabet agencies. They were aware that I was having contact experiences. They attempted to disrupt it. They also attempted to nearly send me insane, which they very nearly did. And then what happened then is that the UFOs just stood back and did nothing and allowed this to happen. And then all of a sudden dramatically step in. And when I look back in my journals, there's predictions that they've made uh, in 2003 that I haven't even bothered to notice because they've disrupted me. It's worked. My harassers have disrupted me. It hasn't worked in the slightest because they always used to say to me, and I couldn't understand this, you will get your own back in a most unorthodox way on them. In a most unorthodox way beyond your imagination, you will. You will avenge what's happened to you so what's happened is we've got this guy out there who stopped me for for five years and uh, hopefully he's reaching for the drinks cabinet now and getting pretty freaked out by it all which is what i want yeah. because uh, he he in particular is, is operating his secrecy empire without uh, accountability with all this and that's a disgrace and also my current government that's elected at the moment that we've elected uh, david cameron and all of them uh, i have no quarrel with them so we're not going to go down the raging subversive hang and flog them route because I've, I've not got a quarrel with them what i have a quarrel with is what happened to me and the unaccountability about it all and the complete secrecy lockdown that's involved with it and it would appear that these guys who were coming over my house just toss that to one side and just come straight in so on that morning ben we'll get round to it but on that morning there were some extraordinary visions delivered to me in sleep, and it was full on. And what it was, it was the two triangle craft, and they flew over the field where I'd been filming with Channel 4, which is even even more unbelievable in the vision that I had. They literally appeared at this field in the vision that I had. And then what happened next was we had these vivid images of clocks, these vivid images of clocks. One was at midnight, uh, and the other was at quarter to 12, and my... My awareness, like I'm speaking to you now, it was as if a pair of hands had picked me up and pointed a big arrow sign to the clock at quarter to twelve. And the next minute I know, there's three guys there looking at me, from the, 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 as if they'd flown in over the house. They'd got this imagery effect as if they'd come in over the house, uh, and as if they were over the house, and they were speaking to me. And they were, they were male Nordic alien, they were male Nordic ET. Uh, and it looked like something out of a cartoon, but it wasn't. He was very real. Um, and he was speaking to somebody, but not to me. You couldn't hear a word he was saying. He was mouthing something. Um, it's quite apparent then that obviously something is going on. And it was as if we were being, uh, we, I say we, uh, I don't know where I fit into this, but it was as if uh, somebody somewhere was being warned. And also I heard a voice say, which I wrote down, which happened on two days back uh, from that event, which said that, this, that, that their presence was a timely reminder to leave me alone. Their presence was a timely reminder to leave me alone. Because they understand, Ben, these people in these UFOs, I call them people, I don't call them aliens, they understand supernatural forces. Mm. And from what I understand, the complexity of supernatural forces means that some of it is even beyond their comprehension. Can you imagine that? As some of it is actually beyond, quite beyond their comprehension, also. Well, I can, uh, I can, I can yeah. imagine. You know, they, maybe just because they, they may know a little bit more than we do, doesn't necessarily mean they have the answers. It's like John Keel. You got he, it. Man. Yeah, Jimmy. You know, he gave the analogy. He said, um, it's, he said that um, just because, just if you look up, um, if you look up on a tall building, you may see a guy cleaning the windows on the forty seventh floor. I mean, he he has a better view than you do of the of the city you're in. Yeah. It doesn't mean he's more intelligent than you. No, it doesn't. And it's it, interesting. But I mean, maybe we should just go back a little bit for the for the sake of the listeners who may not be familiar with the backstory. But you, there's a certain individual you mentioned in your lecture. You've mentioned him in several lectures now. Who you've actually got a photograph of him. Yeah, um, it's not it's not an actual photograph of him, but it's a very clever mock up of a of a look alike. Um, yeah. The man the man is highly dangerous. He's been, uh, he's, been he's been following you around, hasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, he's he's following me around, but he's obviously blatant in uh, brazen and very blatant in what he does. Uh, and he followed me around for about five years. He he is responsible for the delivery of this technology. He has his own secrecy empire. It'll be like diplomatic immunity. But the thing is, Ben, is when he followed me, uh, and just for your listeners' interest, I've been filmed by covert helicopters. Uh, unmarked helicopters and I've had UFOs coming in over my house which triggered him in the first place it triggered his appearance so what we've got is a man out there who knows a bit more than me about my experiences who is possibly now being overtaken by another situation occurring by people who know far more than him 
And what an extraordinary situation that is. And on a number of occasions um, over the past, this year especially, I've been walked, it's been most bizarre, I've been escorted home, I've had a bright white light just appear from nowhere and walk me all the way home, walk with me, not say a word, noiseless, silent, and just fly off. Uh, And this has happened on a couple of occasions where they've just escorted me because it's quite apparent that I'm somebody else's project. I'm somebody else's um, involvement, uh, and that's quite apparent. And this is this is a war. This was a private war, Ben, with the covert UFO interest that exists within the various organisations that we see, and they they keep very quiet about it. And it's a war. It, it was it, with me. It was a war with them, uh, and all because I had these things coming over my house. Uh, I don't call them aliens. I call them people. Is that such a big frigging deal? It seems it is. Yeah, well, it depends how you define alien. I mean, mm. people tend to think of aliens as being beings from another planet, but it's often mm. not that simple. But it isn't. I mean, you. The funny thing was about the um, the Exopolitics conference. It's one thing last weekend. Um, this is uh, by the time this program goes out, it's actually the weekend before last. But yeah. Uh, but um, you, I spoke to uh, all the speakers actually, and, and uh, I mean, I don't want to give details of what they said, but none of the speakers at that conference has had a good night's sleep. None of them. No, no, I got hit at three in the morning. Ellis got whacked. I certainly got whacked at three in the morning by them telling me to shut up. Uh, and it's electronically deliverable, uh, mind-invasive technology, and they just whack you. They, they just whack me, told me to be quiet. Shut up. Back off. Uh, and they, they just... But they're, they're completely... They're a little secrecy empire. Uh, mm-hmm. They're like a set of frigging kids with, with, with high technology that are not accountable to anyone. And they obviously think... Uh, there I say that they are running the show and it's quite apparent that they're not and I'm just a, I was a guy who was caught up in it and this this guy who's followed me around he, 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 last time I saw him was in 2000 so it's now 14 years since I last saw this man uh, he could have been actually following me uh, between that point and, and the next point he could have been um, and the thing is is when he came into the pub to follow me Ben which is what he did which I, I said at the conference he'd followed me and I said at the conference he'd privately mentioned stuff he'd done um, my government, elements of my government and elements of other governments know who he is they know, they definitely know, I know that they know I just know that they know who he is and what he's doing uh, and it's not in the public domain but he's, he, mm. you know, it's, it's control effects it's called control effects operations he's a control effects operative they specialise in uh, remote delivery of mind control to send people absolutely sodding bonkers mm. and, um, it's contro- and it's a step too far ethically and uh, and so on and so on. Um, uh, but the benefits of knowledge and acqu- acquisition of knowledge probably outweigh the benefits of what they could provide. I would think, speaking with my espionage head on. But but there you go. And the swines, Ben, they're absolute swines. They're just yeah. absolute swines. And the thing is, is that you know, like yourself, there a lot of a lot of people um, within the UFO research communities. A lot of keyboard warriorship going on. And there's a lot of people, when it comes to harassment, fellow UFO researchers, one in particular, will say, oh, no, no, that never happened to me. Uh, Well, it didn't happen to me. Well, my organization never got any harassment. And they're not invalidating you, but they are, if you get me. And this is what will happen next. The next stage, when it gets all into the media, all this, the next stage will be to invalidate me and to make a lot of noise, as much noise as possible, about me being a lunatic. But somebody left something on my website calling me an effing wackadoo. I should be locked up. I should be this. I should be that. Uh, I'm completely insane. I'm completely mad. And the level of volume on that will be proportionate to the level of information that's coming across. Is always so, the way, yeah. Yeah, and, and it'll equal itself. So be, the more the more they come in with information, these people that are flying over my house, the more the noise will uh, will increase for esoteric reasons, Ben, as well. Uh, esoteric reasons are driven by all this. We have secret societies and all kinds of sinister goings on, leading to uh, the ultimate um, scam on the human race. But that is another story. Yeah, it's, it's a big long story. But I mean, on on, on a personal level, I mean, these, the kind of things these this this person has been doing to you. I mean, I was yeah. quite surprised on how almost a mundane level this harassment took place because I mean he would you would be walking through a pub and he'd he'd mm. be there and he'd say something or something like that. You're the first researcher Ben out of every UFO in, or interviewer I've spoken to who has literally just suddenly said, "Hey, up, that's not right." They've all sat there and been very polite to me and interviewed me, but but really haven't kind of got involved. They haven't quite. It's not there. But you're the first one who said has, has just expressed concern in your voice there about what he's done. 
because what he was doing was precisely that. So what he was doing, he was stalking me. I've reason to believe that he was in the helicopter. Um, I've reason to to believe that he he was doing that he's been doing things he shouldn't. He he was waking me up with this technology uh, during the night, for example, and. He mentioned that's what he mentioned when I walked past him in the pub very discreetly. And the thing is, as somebody pointed out, as a lad pointed out at the question thing um, at the conference, why didn't you do anything? And this is what is amazing because your brain can't register it, Ben. Your brain just cannot register that a guy in a pub has just said what he said to you. Uh, you can't register in your head that somebody else has said something to you because it's overt, covert surveillance. It's open and covert surveillance. It's designed actually to make you to send you loony, mm. so that when you do uh, pluck up the courage to speak out, you will then be labelled as mentally ill because uh, it's plausible, deniable, and it covers them beautifully. It covers their steps beautifully on how they work. The mindset of them is, Ben, is that this is all perfectly acceptable. They don't do apology. Mm. They don't do ethics. Uh, what they do is experiments on lab rat me or somebody else. That's all they do. And what will be more bothering them more than anything is the fact that uh, they've been compromised that he was daft enough to go to the pub and speak to me that's what bothers them more than anything it won't be what he's done it'll be the fact that he's exposed himself in that way um because now he's now under the focus and on the lens of, of of other organizations that are watching this and there'll be foreign organizations as well it's a dirty murky world of uh, of, of real paranormal espionage ben uh, it really is yeah, it sounds it's certainly so, so, what exactly has he done to you, Tony? I mean, give us give us an example of one attack that he's done. Well, what he uh, what he would a common thing. What they've uh, done. What they. Have. What they have done. Yeah, I mean, a common a common um, a common thing was uh, what they used to do. Although I've no record of it anymore, I'm afraid. But at the time, because I couldn't quite believe what was going on, quite a common overt thing they would do is leave an answering machine message talking about where you've just left. So, if I was coming out of my local Tesco's, a common thing they would do is leave a message. Uh, as if somebody had dialed the wrong number and put the phone on, kind of. And then they'd say, oh, he's just coming out of Tesco's now. Oh, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing that. The usual toss, you know, that they'd come out with. Then, uh, the, the, uh, you know, so the phone calls were quite evident. And then what happened then is that we got the remote mind delivery. We got the, uh, we got the remote mind control coming at me then. Uh, and in 2001 was particularly nasty with this man. It was him that was behind it. He's got a toy. He's got a highly classified toy that he's using on people of, of mind-invasive technology. And... Um, the thing is, Ben, is that I don't think we'll ever see the light of these covered. I don't think we'll get justice, uh, but we may in an unorthodox way. Really? Mm, don't you no, I don't, I don't think. No, no, he's, he's, he's too covered by the secret state. Um, the, the thing is, is that, uh, however, however, um, yeah, he is. He's too, he's too covered. He's, um, he's too covered. He's far too in deep and covered uh, with secrecy. But there again, you see, if they turn round, he walked into that pub. He ordered a drink that night. He had, he had a vehicle. He had keys. He had money. He had vehicle keys in his hand. He was in a vehicle. He definitely was. That means he's mobile. That means he's got a location. That means that location has uh, apparatus. Uh, that location has secrecy and so on and so on. So I drew some important conclusions as to where he could be coming from and what he could be doing. And the fact that he would obey the law of the land and he'll have a name and he'll have a bank account. But nobody appears yet. Nobody appears to have sent me an email. I got two bullshit emails a few weeks back from somebody claiming to be from a facility. Uh, indicating what they'd done to me and what they hadn't done to me, and it was an absolute utter tosh because only I know what's going on with my experiences. Uh, but on 2001, um, I had this bizarre delivery, this simulation running in my head. I was asleep, and I became quite relaxed, actually. Um, and it's it, it's difficult to describe, Ben, but needless to say, we'll keep it as simple as possible. The simulation that ran in my head was artificially delivered by something quite advanced and covert, and it ran a simulation as if I was stood in a church, and it also further ran a simulation that I was taking the wafer and the wine. And then there was this horrendous stabbing action to my head. You never, you, I can't describe it into words, but it was a, a stabbing action, a clearly defined stabbing action, as if it was like out of a Hitchcock movie. And what had happened then is he'd, he'd also, with the deployment of that technology, he'd got me relaxed. So I was relaxed while he was doing the damage, and then I awoke at four o'clock in the morning thinking, um, oh, I think the next night I'm going to die. I don't think I'm going to get through. 
Oh dear. I don't think we're gonna get through the night. This is the brutality of what they were doing and they are brutal and they are absolute they're brutal with it. And they are very evil people and the mindset is not prepared at that time and nor and nor would it be expected to be. I'm a civilian, I'm not military trained, I'm not trained to cope with this, I'm not bloody James Bond. Mm. Um, you know, and, and that was what was happening. And and the thing is is that this was I can I concluded therefore that this was part of an intelligence operation that was running by these individuals and they were doing two things they were testing a weapon they were also as I said bizarre as it may seem they appeared to be after a child from me which was most bizarre which I no, yeah yeah this you, is something you got any children no no oh, no, it, 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 it was most odd. It was most odd was that element of it, and it's very difficult for me to talk about because I'm not even sure myself as to why they were doing what they were doing. But, you know, there was a, then I said at the conference there was a secondary incident where a, a woman had turned up in a pub again and I knew I'd been followed, and she said, see you later, Anthony, in a foreign accent, and I'm known as a Tony, not an Anthony, and the mind doesn't twig that this is, um, this is actually happening. There's a thousand and one things in my journals uh, ben, what they have done with this technology on me, um, and the the reason why is still not clear. The the reason why is not clear, uh, and I don't think, even though it's all very nice to have interaction with with people, um, you know, who, who who we might be considered with different technology, but you don't know what they're doing either. So it's a very it's a very nasty and unpleasant situation to be in, and it's an unfair situation to be in as well. And there are elements out there who know of what's happened to me. I, I, I think there are elements out there within government who actually know what's happened to me and what they've done. I mean, I, mean, I think the first question everyone's going to ask um, is, why you? Why, why have you had these experiences? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. It's, 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 it's complex and we've got to keep it to a bare, um, a bare minimum. There's, 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 there's scenarios that, come, that spring to mind. There's two scenarios, and I'll keep it simple for the okay, listeners. Mate. Uh, it certainly isn't to do with the fact that I'm the special ambassador to the aliens and here to save the world and I'm going to set up my cult. It has nothing to do with that. <laughs> okay. Real life and dealing with uh, dealing with all this is, is far removed from that. So it's not that. One thing is that they're testing weapons. They were testing a covert weapon system. The, third, so the second scenario is that they were attempting to monitor the UFOs by me, via me, um, the third scenario is that I was part and still am part of a vast a communications network that is not human, uh, and I'm somehow linked as a repeater, which I think is my current scenario, that we've got two ET groups speaking to a third party, and the third party is human, uh, over a network of some description, uh, and that puts me now, that puts bright ideas in people's heads, Ben, because now they'll be thinking, oh, we'll have to, we'll, we'll have to mind implant him, we'll have to hack into him and find out what's going on, this is where the lunacy mm. begins, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, I think that's one of the, the scenarios. The, the other scenario is the fact that I have screen memories. Uh, in other words, these are memories uh, that I can't remember. What I've written down about my experiences may not bear any resemblance to what's really happened. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I may have possibly uh, a son with one of them, I may have given birth to a child, or she may have given birth to a child, um, is quite another fourth scenario as well. So you got yeah. somewhere in those scenarios is the truth of what went on. I can guarantee you, Ben, that I, I, did, I haven't made any of this up. I'll go under oath if I have to. We got to I, it's not made up. None of this I've made up. Sure. You can't make it up. Yeah, why? Well, I mean, Christ, to make it up um, is just uh, absolutely surreal. I know I was unwell at the conference, though. I became unwell due to the stress of what they did to me on um, mm. Saturday morning. Uh, I became quite unwell in the afternoon after I gave him a talk. I was not really well. Uh, I recovered uh, and battled on, uh, but it was quite, it was not pleasant, uh, and it wasn't pleasant for some of the speakers either. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and because consciousness is evolving, Ben, we're becoming aware. We're becoming aware that there's something more than just causing wars. Uh, all these engineered crises that we see, one minute it's Ukraine, the next minute it's terrorism, then it's this, then it's that, all in some ways played off like a fiddle, the human race, played like a fiddle yeah. at all levels, you know. Absolutely, I mean, we're seeing this now with ISIS, this thing called ISIS. Which yes. Is, supposedly these Islamic militants have just appeared out of nowhere, when, when in fact, they, I mean, they, they can be traced back to the CIA. 
C- c- correct. This is, the, this is the thing. It's foreign policy blowback. The fact of the matter is, is that the uh, Bush and Blair uh, started this. They did start this. That we've got the foreign policy blowback uh, from it. In fact, during seven seven, this became apparent to me. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is a possibility that Britain courted the very people who did it uh, via training via Pakistan. They were warned. The British government were warned not to train these people in, or court Pakistan as an ally. Mm. Uh, and yet we had the blowback coming. Um, coming back at us. Uh, the thing what I would say, Ben, is because of my experiences with these people who targeted me, I can't trust anything. I can't actually safely say that, that the 9-11 was not what it was or that the 7-7 was not a covert job. You can't. With them people in the background, anything could be happening. Um, nice. But it, it is a concern that, that, uh, that a, a religious ideology has provoked... Um, you know, it's provoking English guys to do terrible things on our soil. Uh, it's a, it's an absolute, uh, it's a concern. It, uh, it really is. Oh, definitely. I mean, as far as nine eleven and seven seven goes, as you, as you know, I mean, there was almost like a, it's almost kind of like um, a truism within the alternative community. These things were, were like black ops. But yeah. Do you, do you differ with that now? Well, um, I differ slightly due to the um, due to the, the the witnesses that I was speaking to. Um, so I, I differ slightly, Ben, but it's only slightly. Uh, you know, it's a slight difference of opinion that I think foreign policy blowback may have uh, may have occurred. I think personally, the conspiracy lies with, within seven seven. There's a possibility that it was a complete and utter cock up of surveillance among the authorities watching them. Either that, or it was allowed to happen. Um, it, it's too co- what is disturbing is that there was a, a real time drill going on, and what is disturbing is that there was the time trains of the bomb. You know, the bombing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, were, were very were very close together, um, and it, that was disturbing. Um, equally disturbing was was. I won't go into it, Ben. I'm not going to go into it because I think okay. I've left that behind now. But uh, in Fair terms enough, of my yeah. experience with the BBC, with all this, it was uh, it was horrendous. Yeah. So I won't um, I won't really talk about that, but. The world is not as it appears. Yeah, and sure. we, well, we have... covered that. We covered that on the previous show, didn't we? We did, mate. Yeah, we did. Uh, there are, uh, there is, and I'll be laughed at for it. But as I said on this Channel Four program, there is something non-human that appears to be uh, lurking about. Definitely. Um, I, should, I yeah. should point out to the listeners actually, if you want to hear my first interview with Tony Topping, uh, go to the show notes. So there'll be a link to that program in the show notes for you to go and listen to that as well. So carry on, Tony. Oh, I'm just saying, so with these people in the background, uh, Ben, who've targeted me, nothing is as, as it appears in our world. Mm. Absolutely nothing can be as it appears now. So no matter, uh, you know, I, so therefore it's only a slight differentiation that, that I feel that they may have been foreign policy blowback rather than conspiracy. But with these people lurking in the wings, one is just not sure what to, what stunt they're going to pull next. Uh, the thing what is concerning, of course, is the uh, the incidents involving Ukraine and <coughs> NATO. Uh, and I was staggered to see the, the one of the uh, American ambassadors leaning over the Russian guy, uh, leaning over the Russian diplomat. Uh, and Russia has not got an angel round its uh, a halo round its head. Uh, but what I will say about Russia is it's one of, and I've had to study their military psychic doctrine. They, they have a mm. military unit to do with psychic warfare. I've studied it. It's very rare information. Yeah in the West, and they were one of the. F- they are one of the few nations, including India, that understand the lay of the land on this issue, as 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 I had to understand and still don't fully understand. And what what is of understanding is the fact that there's some hidden hand playing events. And you couldn't help but notice from this thing to do with Ukraine, there was the U.S. Uh, Secretary of State or Ambassador leaning over this Russian Foreign Minister and giving him a load of grief. I mean, really intimidating. And the Russian Foreign Minister looked flabbergasted he had his mouth gobbed nice. up he was amazed at what he was amazed he couldn't believe what he was hearing i'll never forget it it was on russia today <laughs> this clip i wonder and I think to myself technology that's happened to me scenario that happened to me is she do you think or isn't she yeah. is that is and therefore with this technology is the uh, administrations of various countries are they open to this invasive technology to steer events and this is where the security concern lies with it ben uh this is uh, and i think that most most world leaders will be absolutely um, absolutely horrified i know vladimir putin uh, has acknowledged the fact that they use psychotronic weapons um i think russia were the pioneers of it actually um and and this is a, a dreadful concern of of what's going on in our world because and that's why we're being warned because i can see in my in my book in my journals 
um, that was 2006, I think it is, there's all kinds of predictions being made by them that I hadn't even noticed until I looked at them, but they're clever people. They didn't want me to notice until the time was right. Uh, and it's to do with flooding, flooding of European cities and flooding of this and flooding of that, and we must be aware of what we're doing and uh, aware of things. And, Ooh. you know, it's almost fascinating. Go on, Ben, yeah. I'll just say that's interesting because that's exactly what we experienced in this country a few months ago. Yes, it, it is. The flooding, it's incredible. It's flooding. Uh, and the thing is, is that the, um, as Ellis pointed out in his lecture, he was shown scenes of destruction. Uh, and I've, I was shown scenes of destruction as well. Uh, and the thing is, it, it's quite what they're predicting. What was staggered me was in 2003, they predicted uh, the, these groups of people that the um, that the economy would get into trouble in about 2010, and they they, they they forecast something going on in 2030. But luckily, it's not here yet. But the thing is with them is that their time technology, their technology means that time and events can be altered. They're not fluid. It doesn't necessarily have to happen. As that alien said to Philip Corso, it's a better future if you can handle it. It's yours for the taking. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether your listeners know of Philip Corso, the fascinating story of his foreign acquisition section within the U.S. Army. Well, I've heard of, I've heard of uh, mm -hmm. Colonel Corso. I've read his book. Um, the fact that, the, as he said, it, interestingly enough, it's Arthur Trudeau, his boss, who gives a very small reference to it in his autobiography. So it, if, when people were debunking Corso, there's this little-known paragraph written in Trudeau's biography about the fact that this happened. It's a little small paragraph, I think. Who, that, whose biography is that? Uh, that's General Arthur Trudeau, who was, co who was um, his boss. Oh, of course, boss. yeah, the um, foreign... Ac yeah. And there's a very subtle reference to this by him, uh, which validates what, what Corso... The thing what is fascinating about Corso is they made the assumption, the Americans, that uh, foreign acquisition section, U.S. military, so foreign. So you think, obviously, foreign as in uh, foreign government, foreign navy. Well, no, they were thinking foreign as in alien, foreign yeah. acquisition in alien technology, foreign government, foreign, foreign alien. So I've had to have that mindset, Ben, to cope with what's happening with me. I've had to have this foreign, not spiritual, not, oh, hello, space brothers, no. Mm -hmm, yeah. Because it doesn't, it, it just cannot, we wouldn't survive unless you had that, that element of mindset in you of, of looking and kind of like, and I've fallen into that trap of, of, of assuming that, you know, I mean, I was attacked twice by a UFO uh, years ago. Uh, that's another long story, um, part of a bigger equation, really. But, uh, you know, you've got to be, I think you've got to have your guard up with it. But as I say, what happened with Corso was they were aware that this was happening. They were aware that people were being implanted. Uh, and also from these people, from what I learned, and I wrote it down somewhere, I can't find it anywhere, but there is a an ethical dilemma among them all about what they do to human beings and the abduction of them and the implanting of them. There's some very strong ethical issues about it. But the question from my research, from what I've been reading in my journals, is why the UK, why does one particular group have a particular focus on the United Kingdom and its direction it's going down in history and so on and so forth? That's that is particularly yeah. puzzling. Very good uh, question in detail. I mean, this is an interesting. This is an interesting subject we're getting into, Tony, because um, I mean, Colonel Corso's book has been described as, oh, it's just a hoax, it's loony. But I mean, our, you know, General Trudeau himself, who Corso refers to many, many times in his book, they were close friends, that, and, that's they, and they worked together on this. Yes, in the, when they were working, they were both officials at the Pentagon. Yes, and yes. Um, so uh, General Trudeau himself also refers to this because this, in a sense, it does validate Corso. Yes. Very, although, I mean, there's still, there's still elements of his book which I find questionable. It's called The Day After Roswell, incidentally, yes. ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go and look it up. Yes. But, um, it's, uh, so, anyway, you were talking about the, the, uh, the, the role that the United Kingdom plays in, because I mean, we've often heard that the, the British Isles mm. is central to the, uh, the world mm. for various... Some people say it's the heart chakra of the world. Mm. Mm. You know, the fact, the fact of the matter is we do, I mean, we do on, in... On these islands, Brit Great Britain Island and the various other islands around it, like you know, on the Isle of Lewis where they have Callanish, there's a massive, it's a massive, numerous super sites of ancient structures. Yes, nowhere yes. else in the world has this kind. No, of no, no, nowhere else in the world has it, mm. um, and it's 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 all. It's all geared towards steering, uh, steering history away, steering human history down a different line, uh, steering the UK around certain events. Um, that they're, they're being somebody somewhere is being warned by them, and and the UK appears to be an investment. I know I was looking at some, um, I was looking at some journals of an Area 51 scientist a few weeks back, 
to do called Project Blue Planet. Uh, and what that, what was very interesting was the documentation he'd written. He'd written a, a journal about about what he was researching, mm-hmm. and it was very in depth. And it went through the physiology and the communications. And what was actually odd is he, he, he kept, when I received my email from this fantasist guy who, who was saying he worked for the government, this that, and the other, he came out with something uh, which could have been a coincidence uh, called I think it was RHCMT which was the technology they were using on me, so it was said. Uh, and I, I thought, oh, yeah, there we go. Yet, further down the line in this scientist notebook is the term RHCMT, again, written in his notebook. Now, that's an interesting cross-correlation, but it could be a coincidence. Uh, but he was discussing the fact that England uh, has certain energy lines, which means it's easier for the um, – it's a major energy centre, and this means it's very easy for the UFOs to transit in and transit out of our dimension, as it were. Yeah. Um, and and that, was, that was absolutely fascinating. But why, in my journals, it's clearly stating here that the, uh, the United Kingdom this, the UK that, uh, the fact that one of the groups has a population, one of these alien civilizations has a population the size of Israel – you know, and he's stuck in another dimension and keeps interceding into our dimension. Uh, and what was even fascinating was this, um, the Norwag factor, what I was reading up on. Your listeners might want to look at this. It's on the, yeah. yeah, and this makes perfect sense to me that they, they had a, a different particle physics to us whereby they would accelerate particles to such an extent that they could build other dimensions, uh, build other spaces in terms of buildings. So if you had a, a little UFO... The fact of the matter is, according to their technology, and this this would be quite, actually, I think we're probably on the on the breakthrough. And another scientific thing that puzzles me, but uh, according to the technology, they could actually uh, the UFO would be massive, but yet the outside of it would be very small because of the way they could project and, and accelerate particles and make other dimensions and blocks and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. uh, which I found interesting. This is quite something because it's a bit like Doctor Who. I mean, we've already. Yes, Doctor Who said himself that uh, the universe is a kind of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey yeah. kind of thing, rather oh, than exactly. a linear straight line. And now we have something that's bigger on the inside. So, it, it, yeah, but I mean, it's just like cause, you know, seriously. I mean, it, you know, I'm, I'm joking about it in a way, but I mean, it's, many a true word is spoken in jest. And could we perhaps be talking about a, a culture that can actually create its own kind of big bang? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Ac- so according to uh, some of the research I've been reading from India, the fact that some mathematicians have actually worked out that they could shift a planet interdimensionally and it go, it works mathematically, it can be done. They could actually do it. Mathematically, it seems to work. How the hell did they come to that conclusion? I, I've no idea. We were doing a lot of research on what was happening was it appeared to be that uh, one of these secretive think tanks based in India who was studying UFOs was leaking stuff to its press at a rate of knots, just shoving it in the media. And it's pretty advanced stuff, what they were shoving out, just putting out there, just putting it out there all the time, including uh, one of the most fascinating things that, that, that I never heard of before, that the uh, a planet within a, gal- a galactic system, a planet is not a planet like we would see. We've got a planet with countries and it's got a government, but their planets are a regional government centre. So each planet is a region, yeah. not just a planet, it's a region. And, and I find that it's kind of like these... And, and the other thing that I found fascinating was if, as I said in my lecture, I'm communicating with one of them who's a female... And she's 2.57 million light years away. Mm. Now, thought. Now, now, now. This is the thing, Ben. You see, you you could get. You've got to think out the box because you could get ridiculed and lampooned to mm. hell. But the thing is, is that does that mean, therefore, that the speed of thought is travelling faster than the light barrier? Well, it's perf- the thing is, it's perfectly possible if you're taking into account um, quantum superposition. Because, I mean, it, it, people have often said, you know, if you, you know uh, how you can have one particle that flies off in one direction and one that flies off in another, according to quantum physics. This is not, this is mainstream stuff. Even Professor Brian Cox talks about this. Yes. But, I mean, one will go one way, one will go the other, and it's almost as if they're connected. Yes. Even though they're both travelling away at the speed of light. So they, there's no physical way those two could have any no. communication, according to Einstein's theory of relativity. But, now, if you could learn to capture, if you could find a way of capturing one, each of these... Um, particles. You could build a ma- magnificent communication device. You could speak. You could speak to somebody in a galaxy on the other side of the universe in yeah. real time without waiting for the billions and billions of light years for the radio waves to get there. Because yeah. electromagnetic waves, of course, travel at the speed of light. This is the, the, yes, this is right. This then. is and bypassing then, space. Yes. I mean, this is um, so. Uh, it's perfectly possible. 
it's perfectly possible, isn't it? And they're not they're not using radio waves. They're not they're not mm. using they're definitely not using radio waves. They're using something and they're not they're not using radio waves. And what is interesting to note as well is the other is the other kind of thing about the, the matter of you have a um you have matter and then you have a sodium electric, you've got matter and then you've got the reverse cycle, you've got the antimatter world. And there's uh, and from what I've learned is the fact that it, within that world of antimatter is other dimensions and planets on a reverse side. Uh, and what they're saying uh, from what I've picked up on from my research, and this makes perfect sense, is that we have a reverse self, not just a soul, but a reverse side of us, mm-hmm. like a reverse, where it's as if we're, we have a reverse parallel to us. And what the, this would make a lot of sense uh, for those poor people who have been abducted and they just cannot make any sense of it. Uh, and then the TV cameras turn up and portray them as absolute loons, yeah. when in fact there's a possibility that the reverse self, some other aspect of the self, has been abducted or has been communicated with and they're left to pick up the pieces. Uh, and that appears to be what, what is possibly uh, going on there as well. Yeah. So that, and, and I noticed from speaking to you, Ben, as well, as to how my experiences are somehow evolving, not from uh, they did it to me, uh, isn't it terrible at what they've done, to now finding out more about them and who they are and what it's all about. Uh, and that's a very big change step. That's a, And that Definitely. happened this year. And that's a very big change, a very big change to make, mm-hmm. uh, a change in gear. Uh, and I'm hoping, therefore, that uh, as loony as this may seem, which it isn't with your listeners, but I'm sure it is. In I fact, yeah. what is interesting, Ben, is that the British the British public are far more switched onto this than the than the people in power give them credit for. Well, exactly. Uh, this is why they're making travesties yeah. like Confessions of Alien Abductee. Yeah. They're trying and to it was shut a, that down. Yeah, th- th- it was, and it was an absolute. That was an absolute bloody uh, bloody travesty. Um, uh, really, frankly, though, uh, it has to be said that the the two people involved actually should have known better editorially as to where it was going down. They were a comedy company with a comedy. Yeah. Uh, it's bound and the name as well you know confession I mean the, the name it's, it's it's just absolutely uh, you know I mean it's like Channel 4 they approach me though, though somebody will say Tony we want to do a documentary on you we're going to call it My Son is an Alien <laughs> now already oh, yeah. we, know, we know where it's going don't we yeah. well to be fair to the two people involved I mean the, the, these these people you know off the fence productions they're very very devious I know because I spoke to them um, at the Nottingham event which I think were you at the Nottingham event the oh, Amash, yeah. yeah the Amash event in Nottingham and they they seem because they put this they're very deep, good at getting people involved they put this thing out saying oh you know this the director I spoke to the director a nice young lady she said we're, we're, this has been a life changing experience for me I've really really woken up to a lot of things because of this and I thought yeah we're making progress of course I didn't know what the title was going to be no. <laughs> they didn't tell us what the title of it was going to be or what the format was going to be but mm. <laughs> but um, oh that, that's uh, kind of that's a, the kind of I mean, the reason, the reason they're doing this, Tony, is because people are waking up to it. I mean, it's ironic, isn't it? Because we haven't, we now have more TV channels than we ever had before. I mean, when I was a kid, it was just, cha- it was just a channel, channel BBC One, Two, Three, Four, and that was it. Mm. Now we've got hundreds of channels. More money is being being spent on TV production than ever before. Mm. But oh, yeah. quality, oh, yeah. that, quality has descended, especially, I've noticed, I mean, mm. you only have to go back maybe 15 years or so, and there were some really decent programmes on this subject, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it's now plummeting, because yeah. it's almost a reaction, it's mm. it's attempt to, it's, it's an antithesis of aware, rising awareness of this subject, would you agree? Yeah, it 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 is. Um, there's a lot of time, trouble, and effort gone to crippling human consciousness and where it's heading for, for very complex reasons of which our governments are actually aware of. Uh, elements of our elements of the of the military in a most advanced way are aware of this. That there is a lot of uh, they've gone to a lot of time and trouble to derail consciousness and derail our development. Uh, and the thing is with it, what is most concerning is the horrific consequences this could have forward in time for us. Uh, this is the thing uh, ben because if you're in a real life when you are taken by these people uh in their craft and it sounds absolutely comical but that's the way it goes if you're put in another dimension with them and put back again time is flowing differently you've rudimentary traveled mm. forward in time you've been a time traveler in a very rudimentary way and that brings about all kinds of crazy observations and consequences to the contactee concerned so there's a, a persistent uh, a persistent warning going on but what will happen is you only need a think tank uh, one of these think tanks out there, like, uh, I don't know, one of them out there, just to suddenly go, right, uh, we're going to put some of this stuff out in the media now, like they did with Corso with the transistors when he went to 
uh, Bell, AT&T Labs and all of them and circulated it all. Uh, you only, I think that could happen. Uh, at one point, I'm waiting for one of these UK broadcasters, and I don't think it will happen, to, to really do something pretty good and pretty award-winning that we can all be proud of. The Discovery Channel don't hold back, do they? The Discovery Channel, are, are yeah. full on, they just absolutely love it, don't they? They're full-on documentaries about <laughs> UFO. Channel 5 did one as well, didn't they? Was it Channel 5, Sean Ryder's one? Um, um, yeah, I mean, that wasn't. But that was. I was actually quite surprised that that yeah. wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. Exactly, it's the, it's the <laughs> editorial format, isn't it, of yeah. Channel Four and the way they do things, the way. Then again, I mean, to be honest, my know, my so. my expectations of the mainstream media's coverage of this subject cannot really be undercut. No, you know, no. no <laughs> but no, I mean, that was that wasn't that was not bad actually. And there's that no. one with Danny Dyer. Just yes. A, um, yeah. I believe in you. That was actually. I actually quite like that. I couldn't believe yeah. it, but I actually quite this, like this that. This is right. Well, what you need is you, you need reassurance, I think, from the people involved that they're not going to lampoon people uh, and make them look daft. Uh, and that's that's the, the real... That's what you really... I think things will progress, Ben, where the British public will go UFO bar me and won't be able to get enough of it. Uh, I, I personally think that's what's going to happen, um, you know, I think at some point in the proceedings. But my experiences are just evolving. Uh, but I'm a broken man, Ben. I am. I'm a broken man because of it. I'm not... Uh, I don't know whether I'm beyond repair, but I'm certainly spiritually broken in every way because of it all and what they did. Yeah. Bro- you, you've often come across, I must say, as someone who's quite troubled by all this. I yeah. mean, I've, I've known you for some years now. And yes, I think it's met. troubling. Yeah. It's very troubling. What what I've lived through is very. In fact, some of it some of it would would send your readers uh, and listeners, should I say, not your readers, but your listeners, uh, sent running for the drinks cabinet. It, you've got to be very responsible with it. There's certain levels that you go down, and certain levels that you don't go down. Because uh, it's some of it is, is is nasty. It's the extreme end of paranormal espionage and the UFO situation. It's the extreme sharp end of it, and it can get quite hair raising. But I do recommend the work of a guy in Russia called Alexey U. Savin. Uh, and I recommend everybody have a look at his site called New Cosmology. Super. Right. And this is the Russian military's kind mm-hmm. of psychic unit going going off piste and doing something philosophical and spiritual within the world of UFOs and uh, and that. It's absolutely fabulous. Well, that's interesting because we all we've all heard about the the United States in the Cold War. They had a remote viewing project. I mean, Yuri Geller is claims to have been involved in this, and um, yeah. there's evidence to say he was because he was involved in um, yeah. Uh, Russell Targ and Howell put off's experiments. He was. Yeah, that, that, mm-hmm. that's right. And, and it went into many projects. It, it, yeah. start, it, it went into many projects, but what fascinates me about Savin uh, and his team, and this was this was brought to me by Joseph McMon Eagle, who, um, who I've liaised with, and he very kindly gave me this information. It, I understand it's his opposite number. Uh, this guy, Savin, he's a tour de force. He should be on British media. We need to get him on a documentary because he's incredible. But basically... He sat there in front of Russian media, uh, and, and by the way, Ben, I have <laughs> I'm Russia uh, the, as a country, no angel, but they sat there, sat there, um, Russian press sat there, Pravda, and so on and so forth. And he's as a as a member of the Russian military, former serving member, he's just coming out with all this stuff to do with aliens, and. Um, the press find it fascinating, and they're absolutely relieved that somebody could could talk about this so candidly. You know, one of the most fascinating facts, which is true, that he came out with, is that ninety percent of the contact experience in real life with with off world uh, intelligences will be with a female, and that's really? absolutely correct. All through my uh, experiences since nineteen ninety nine, it's always been with a female. There's always been a group of possibly, um, we'll say, three of them. Three feet early in a constant kind of drip, drip, drip liaison. But on this particular day in May in 2014, it was three males that turned up, three men that actually turned up, male, male ET, which is rare. I, I yeah. hardly see them. Uh, but he was absolutely spot on on that. And the fact that they'd, he'd communicate, his unit had communicated with these off world beings, and the fact that these off world <laughs> beings had indicated to them that they would give them no military information, uh, but they would give them information to do with stuff related to medical. And so on, and he's saying this in front of all these journalists, and these journalists are just now. You imagine some general in the UK going on telly and going, "Yes, and my unit did this, and my unit did that." Oh, he'd oh, be sectioned, would he? I oh, know. This is well. This is goes back to Russia because I mean, it's funny because yeah. like all through the Cold War, the Russians were, co- you know, they were in their attics, tuned, trying to tune into the BBC World Service, hoping yeah. the KGB wouldn't spot them. Yeah. Now we in the West are turning to a Russian TV channel, RT. To yeah. find out the truth, which our news media won't tell us. I mean, oh, it's phone ringing, Ben. I do beg your pardon. Sorry, I've had that. Before. Have you <laughs> had that as well? Oh my days! Sure. Just miss um, I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Because, like, um, I mean, what's you know, on terms of Russia? I mean, Russia is a country which some people. I mean, I think they've 
quite prematurely saying this, that yeah. it's somehow uh, fighting back against the New World Order because they turned down an IMF loan, things like that, and they're, you know, they're a very progressive nation, and they're standing up to the New World Order. I think that might be a bit premature, but it's, it's pretty clear that they're not doing exactly what they're being told. They've not, they're not doing exactly what the, uh, the, the globalists are telling them to. No, exactly. What is, what is of concern, and it is of concern, is the, the lunacy that they are doing in provoking Russia. Uh, and this 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 has lunatic consequences for for the future. Uh, what they're setting, what they're doing, the actions the United States are doing, which is uh, and NATO, which they're doing, uh, sold on the fact that we are being protected by them, and that the Ukrainian government is a is a free dem- democratic government, which it is not. It's uh, you know you're provoking a country there that will that will arise, and this has consequences for the future. It's almost as if there's this sadistic pleasure in wanting global conflict with them, uh, and provoking yeah. Russia. Is a is a wrong move. De- oh, definitely. Well, Russia is uh, Russia. Unlike Iraq and, uh, and these other and Iran and these other places, Russia can actually fight back. Yeah, R- um, Russia, Russia can. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to start a world war, because I mean, I've, I'm I'm no doubt that there's a drive towards a world war in order yeah. to, to to create the ultimate chaos. Yeah. Ordo, ordo ab chaos to quote the Freemasonic um, yeah. motto to create yeah. the new world. Now, um, so I mean, Russia, you need two evenly matched sides if you're going to do that. Yeah, you, you certainly do, and the fact that China is uh, the fact that China is also present, and, uh, uh, and this is this is why, incidentally, I think in you know, did you know that Japan went through the Industrial Revolution in ten years. It did, didn't it? it? You, you know, in the late nineteenth century, it was turned from a, basically a medieval nation. Mm. It was it was centuries behind the rest of the world mm-hmm. into this massive industrial superpower, which mm. took on which mm. took on the rest of the world in in, 19, in the nineteen thirties and forties. Mm-hmm. So, and I think they may be doing the same again. They're trying to create an evenly matched side, so they can have this kind of balance. But what what do you think of Dmitry Medvedev? Because um, he is the prime minister of Russia. He's sort of like Putin's uh, second in command. What, he was. To, he made a comment about aliens. Do you remember? Well, you've got to remember that Russia's uh, Russia's classified spy unit under something called Troop Ten Thousand and Three, as, as led by this guy uh, Alexei Yusavin. In the 1980s, they had. Uh, it was known as uh, specialist advisors to the general staff, and these the, the unit was called. And basically, what they did is they did uh, what they did of researching the UFO and alien situation. Mm. So they'll be one of the few countries in the world uh, who will who will fully know fully know what's going on with the UFO situation. Um, and really, if they fully know what's going on with the UFO situation, uh, that means that we could possibly collectively as a human race avert a certain uh, disaster. It's mm. not very nice, uh, Ben, to have, uh, to have visions thrown at you of, um, of kind of like radioactive uh, poison land and uh, the yeah. consequences and the absolute mayhem that it could cause. Um, and and that's, a, that's a great concern. And so what he, what he said would probably be only the tip of the iceberg uh, about what's going on. But it's interesting, the political party in India, the BJP, or the BJB, I think they're pronounced, PJP, um, begins yeah. with a B and a J and ends in a P, I think, PJP. Yeah. And what they said was uh, that they were, when they get re-elected, they said in India, uh, they would declassify all the UFO stuff because it is being the secrecy is being led uh, by an international cabal of individuals who are keeping it quiet that we are not alone. That uh, is uh, disclosure. That is the disclosure. Mm, that people like Stephen Bassett have been talking mm, to. You know. Yeah, th- this is absolutely correct. That that that, that, that we are uh, that we are not alone. And my phone's gone off again. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? It's it's, yeah. it's disclosure, and uh, it's it's. it's you kind of like the thing with it is is that we we're not sure what this world is that we're looking at. I'm not sure what this world is that we're looking at, but recorded in my journals is the fact that these these ETs are indicating that they're uh, one one sentence they came out with was that they uh, that they wish to acquire our technology for better delivery of nuclear weapons. Mm. Another another term they came out with is are the natives going to be throwing rocks at each other with nuclear weapons? You, you're dealing with people who are three centuries ahead in technology, watching us lobbing nuclear weapons at each other, destroying yeah. our planet. Um, and they're trying to warn and, and definitely hint uh, that this is what's going to happen if governments of this world are not careful. Um, and this is, appears to be what's happening. You only need a hothead in Russia, uh, not like Putin. You only need a real hothead in Russia who just will not have any nonsense at all from the West and will just, just go over the borders into the Ukraine, ally with China, and uh, away you go. Um, and, and this is the kind of thing that, that, will, that will happen if we're not careful, and it's very worrying, uh, Ben, yeah. it really that's exactly, is. That's exactly what the globalists want. Even if they're not directly controlling Russia right now, that is what they want. 
Yeah, they, they want that, don't they? But I notice with a lot of them, it's it's a similar thing, isn't it? That, that you know, they they were ranting on on Twitter. A few of them, uh, Tony Blair as well, ranting on on Twitter about we need to fight for freedom with it. But he's not picking up the machine gun, and I don't think other people are and their families are not picking up the machine guns <laughs> to do the dirty work of course. and it's uh you know it's it's a bit crap isn't it really as always it'll be the, 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 the it'll be the working class guys we pulled out the factories and given a tin hat and a rifle and told to go and yeah and, well, and, and more fool us ben more fool us for falling for it as human beings well i think i mean if anyone refuses to do that i don't think they're going to be given white feathers i think there's we, we've come on a little way since then we have we, we, anyway, we, Tony, we're going to have to call it. A, we're getting close to the end now, um, but I want to um, I want to thank you for being a guest on the Hapanwo show. It's been really great to talk to you again. And um, so, before we go, can you tell the uh, listeners ab- about how they can find out more about you? Yeah, I'm at uh, just type in TonyTopping.co.uk, and my website will come up. Go onto YouTube, type Tony Ops UFO, and all my interviews and all my material uh, will uh, will just uh, will just come up there for you to look at. And there's loads to get your teeth into. Uh, there's really loads of stuff out there. It's brilliant material. So please take a look. I'm also on Facebook as well. Uh, so yeah, please uh, please take a look. And also, I mean, if you, I believe that <coughs> some of the archive Planet X shows are still available. On YouTube? Yes, yeah, yes, they are, yeah. The, the Planet X shows, when I did the Tony Topping show, I've just not got time, had time to go back to it. I will get time eventually, but at the moment I've just not had time. Uh, but yeah, the Tony Topping show, uh, which was on Planet X, and uh, what what was good there was we had we went really deeply into yeah. people's experiences, and, uh, you know, uh, especially that lady who was ridiculed in that documentary, we got into the nitty-gritty with her about her experiences without making her look stupid, uh, with no intention of making her look stupid. It was very revealing what she was saying. So, you know, all that kind of thing. Brilliant yeah. stuff. Well, um, thank you. That's if you go go there to find out more listeners. And I want to once again thanks Tony Topping for being a guest on the Hapanwo Show on Critical Mass Radio. Cheers, have a, mate. Have a pleasant day. Thanks, Cheers. mate. Bye bye.